My name is Mark from Buddha Beans Coffee and we're here with Daniela from Acresco Imports. She is a specialty coffee director at their farm, so they have six farms. So thank you for coming out. Oh, thank you for having me. So do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself, a little bit about the farm, um, and maybe what you do there? Sure. Um, well, I'm a Colombian coffee brewer. I know it don't look like one, but <laughs> I am. <laughs> I'm a full-time coffee brewer, um, fifth-generation coffee brewer in my wow. family. Uh, I've been working with specialty coffee for the past uh, six or seven years now, and on the coffee uh, industry for almost a decade. Well, um, and I got the phone for it. Nice. And, and I get to process and work on the cherry on top. Oh wow! Of the of the cake. Nice. <laughs> and um, so, can you tell us a little bit about your farm and maybe how you got into it? You said that's your fifth generation, but can you tell us? Especially with this farm that you that you own and you know you run, can you tell us a little bit about how you got into working for this farm, or not working for this farm, but owning this farm? Yeah, actually, it started uh, just 13 years ago. Okay. Um, my father was never interested into coffee or farms at all or producing anything. Uh, turns out, my my grandfather got a heart attack. Okay. And uh, my dad just went. Uh, we saw the art that needs to be toned down. Oh, nice. Just a bit of art spatter. Okay. And it turns out uh, my grandfather used to be used to run a really big farm back in 1963. Okay. The owner like fired him and uh, gave that farm to his son. Wow. And in 14 years ago, kind of that son offered my grandfather the farm for sale. That's awesome. Yeah. They wanted to buy like a little portion of it. Uh huh. And my dad just came in and said, like, why well, like, don't we buy it all? Yeah. And he was like, why? Like, you? Coffee? Uh -huh. Like, farming? Producing? Anything? Mm -hmm. Like, are you kidding me? And he just said, like, well, I don't know anything about coffee, but I do know about innovation, about uh, companies, about personnel, and et cetera. Uh, and you know about coffee, so why don't we just jump in together into this adventure? And what started as a crazy idea, well, look at us today. We are one of the most stable and um, inspiring companies uh, in Colombia. We're now it's amazing. even one of the biggest ones. We wow. have now uh, 2 million trees wow. uh, in That's six different farms. Wow. We have a specialized nursery with uh, leaf grass resistant um, varieties. Wow. And, um, and I get the funny part. I mean, they pay you to drink coffee. Yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. I know. That is amazing. <laughs> so as a specialty coffee, um, passion person, I just took the best of our production mm -hmm. and just move it forward. Definitely. And everything is about facts and numbers. Mm -hmm. Nothing is about uh, just random uh, things or, or just try out. No, uh -huh. What I want to do is to like, bring all of that knowledge uh -huh. into the actual grocery. That is awesome. why I'm here. I've been in the US side for um, more than a year now. Okay. And uh, that's the main point of a coastal imports in nice. the US is to try to make things different and not uh, just sit down and see my future as my father or my grandfather Definitely. like so stressed out and Climate change and see yeah. how it cries. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to sit there and yeah. just settle. Yeah. So, this is just a coffee brewing trying to make things different. That's amazing. And just so everyone knows um, who's watching it right now, we get all of our Colombian coffee that is caffeinated from Acresco Imports. Um, right now, we have an exclusive from them. We have two different types um, that we get from them at this point, and we're going to try out another one. Um, for some cold brew. So another question is, can you kind of explain how you plant coffee? Like what is the process of planting coffee? Well, actually every single uh, country has its own methods okay. or different practices. Uh -huh. In Colombia, we count on a huge um, investigation facility from uh, the National Federation of Coffee Growers that oh, wow. helps a lot. To, to grow coffee, to take decisions, and, and to make like the proper uh, movements mm -hmm. for the plantation. So nice. um, we 
really uh, admire your job and you can try to like, stick to the investigation. Definitely. And um, it's really simple. Uh, of course, everything starts on the nursery. Uh -huh. um, it's really important to have a really specialized process when picking the cherries, mm -hmm. doing the wet mill yeah. for the seeds, uh -huh. planting uh, seed beds okay. on sand. Uh -huh. We do it uh, so the roots can like, spread freely. Oh, wow, okay, right? that makes sense, yeah. And then we take them out of the sand, uh -huh. we pick them. Mm -hmm. If they're straight, uh -huh. if they have like enough. Okay, yeah, like coming off of the main yeah, stem. Okay, exactly. yeah, yeah. Uh, and then we plant it in an individual bag. Okay. Uh, with a really specific mix of soil and organic um, like fertilizer. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then after a few months, um, we just plant it on the ground. Okay. With uh, acidity regulator. Okay. Uh huh. And then 18 months later, we have the first harvest. Wow, so 18 months. It takes 18 months to grow and it's a tree, correct? Yeah, after okay, we just plant so it. Everyone knows. From the seed, it's another extra six months. So okay. we're talking about two years. Oh, wow. Being lucky. Yeah. Because um, there's always things going on. Uh huh. And. Um, and climate change is a real thing. Yeah, definitely. And you never know. But yeah. When planting coffee trees, uh -huh. you want to respect like the biological calendar, uh -huh. maybe. Yeah. Yeah, because for example, if you plant one tree mm -hmm. by the end of the year, uh -huh. like the tree is going to get confused. Uh -huh. So the first harvest won't be in two years; it will be in two and a half years. Oh, okay. So you have to like respect wow. the development of nature. Wow. And um, in our case, we have fully exposed plantations. Wow. Uh, and you need to look for uh, like a middle point between um, density, like how many trees you want, uh -huh. how tight uh -huh. are they, because if they are too tight, so the photosynthesis is uh -huh. not efficient. Okay. And if it is too spread out, uh -huh. the productivity of the, of the farm itself will be low. Okay. Because in one hectare, mm -hmm. you should have at least, we use uh, around 7,000 trees. Okay. So if you have less, uh -huh. that hectare is going to produce less coffee. Got it. Okay. So you need to find your spot if it is flat, uh -huh. if it's night. Uh, also, nutrition is super important uh -huh. to be able to like uh, be sort of control on the application. Uh -huh. And harvest. Is the most important season for yeah. us, of course. Uh, it's hand picked. Okay. In Colombia, we cannot use oh, wow. um, any kind of technology for that because okay. it's crazy. Uh -huh. so, for example, one farm that is called uh, La Loma, mm -hmm. I, where Marta is from, okay. that farm is from, nice. it is 30 hectares. Right? Okay. Uh -huh. It starts in 1200 meters above sea level. Okay. Ends up in two thousand. Whoa! So it's it's like you need four by four boots oh, to walk wow. there. Wow! <laughs> so it's super crazy. So there's a lot of strategy that goes into even planting it. So yeah. it's like a lot of it goes into first you need to get the plant ready, and then you have to strategically plan out where you're going to put them. Oh, of course. And yeah. then depending on the terrain. Wow, that's really cool. And even the wind. Oh wow! Um, I don't know the sun uh -huh. when it comes out. It goes. It's Crazy. Wow. How water flows through the mountain. Okay. There are so many things wow. that you have to take account for. That's yeah. amazing. And taking care, of course, of the nature around it. Yeah. Because if you have uh, water springs, mm -hmm. there is a lot of conditions we need to apply because all of our farms are Rainforest Alliance nice. uh, certified. So it was weird because actually, as we have always been so strategic and so organized uh -huh. when we were going to take that movement and to make the decision of getting certified uh -huh. almost everything was done wow. like okay let's just put a couple of signs and that's awesome just to grind up the uh -huh. trash organic uh -huh. yeah it. like what's wow. easier than thought that's awesome yeah it's that's really so you guys were doing it even before you had to yeah that's because amazing as my father being so like Naive, uh -huh. unexperienced. Uh -huh. 
that allowed us to investigate yeah. and to ask. And we always ask for second opinions. Uh -huh. We always look for um, a backup. We always look for uh, investigation. Not only my neighbor told me uh -huh. or someone yeah. did it this way. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's dig in. Let's look for better results. Uh -huh. Let's look for, of course, um, we need to be profitable. We yeah, are a company. definitely. Definitely. A long time ago, we believed. Uh -huh. in it um we're now super passionate about it yeah definitely yeah you can see it you can I, taste it <laughs> yeah, yeah that too and of course it's all like coherent uh -huh. because um it's really weird to find like a young uh people getting in love with coffee yeah so it's not only our plan for the rest of our lives uh -huh. but also to spread that passion to more people. Definitely. Because if young people don't get attached uh -huh. emotionally to coffee, yeah. coffee's gonna die. Definitely. Because it's not, at this point, for most of the coffee growers, mm -hmm. it's not profitable. Yeah. It's not sustainable. Yeah. And if we can do something, even if it is the smallest talk yeah. to one coffee grower to yeah. like just be contagious yeah, definitely. <laughs> about it, um, I think that's part also of the value we would like to bring to the industry. Definitely. Definitely. To spread our passion, the knowledge, uh -huh. the backup, to say, like, to show that it's possible. Yeah. That through different practices uh -huh. and being organized and, and just have the records uh, on time. Yeah. And getting things done as they should, it, mm -hmm. it can be profitable. Definitely. Yeah. So it's. So we love working with you guys. You guys, we can see how much, you know, how much passion you put into it. And Emilio, you know, the first time we met him, you could just feel the passion like flowing through him, like to you. So ah, I'm so glad we connected and thank you, like I said, about coming out. So what are some of the biggest challenges um, that you, well, I guess first, how many different types of coffee do you have on the farm or on your farms? Okay, so um, when we talk about types, uh -huh. most of the people go towards the variety. Okay. Uh -huh. um, in terms of variety and like genetic uh -huh. information, we have Castillo, uh -huh. we have Tabi. Okay. Both of them were developed by Seni Cafe. Oh wow. It is the research center of the agency. Nice. Uh, these are developments that were done like first investigations were like four to fifty years ago. Wow. This is like no just random yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, it is. They are resistant uh -huh. to uh, be pressed. Oh wow! And they are highly productive. Nice. And also, I had um, a little craving uh -huh. for uh, an exotic variety. I uh -huh. planted a couple thousand mocha trees. Yellow oh wow! Mocha. Oh yeah. Some of it mutated into pink. Okay. So I just grabbed all of the pink and replanted it. Okay. I have almost a couple thousand of those. Oh, nice. Yeah, and she brought some in. They brought some in and it literally tastes just, I mean, it smells, we haven't tasted it. We're going to taste it after this, but it smells just like a chot, like, like pure cacao would taste so, or smell. So yeah, it smells really great. good. Yeah. We're it's super like excited to try it. Presidential exotic. Yeah. We're su and it looks different. It's like really small beans. It's, it's really cool. And also, um, even if we have just three varieties, uh -huh. in terms of Types. Yeah. Uh, part of my job is to identify the flavor and potential of every single farm. Wow. But I went forward and I know the exact flavor and potential of every single lot. Wow. So every harvest, I will follow up on the potential. Uh -huh. And uh, even if it's the same variety, there are some conditions that mm -hmm. can change the flavor. Definitely. And how the tree decides to metabolize the, the, the nutrients uh -huh. and, and everything changes uh, over the time. So or, every year can be different, or every two years, as you said, it takes, yeah. it'll be different, even and, if it's the same. Yeah, and also the, um, when the tree is fully adapted, uh -huh. also changes. Okay. Or we have a really like separate practice we do every January, uh -huh. we cut up. 20% of our trees. Oh, wow. Why? Because in a coffee plant, uh -huh. a tree, where it grows one bean, uh -huh. it doesn't grow back. Okay. So you have to renew uh -huh. the, like, the body uh -huh. of the tree, right? 
So um, in different countries, they have like different techniques. Uh-huh. Uh, the one that has worked better for us, uh-huh. you know, facts, numbers, yeah. always, yeah. Uh, is to cut up on the base. So we do like um, a cut on okay. the base of the tree, uh-huh. like 20 centimeters from the floor. Uh-huh. And then it starts to grow back. They grow. Oh, wow. And then we choose like the two to three strongest branches. Uh-huh. And then we leave it. And next year it's fully grown and oh. producing again. So we do 20% every year. Wow. So we have like a really stable cycle of cash flow. Yeah. Because definitely. every single year we'll have the same um, producing Deal. plants nice. in the company. So That's that awesome. is really important. And there are so many different ways to do it. Yeah. There's some people, uh, for example, in Africa, uh-huh. they cut the, the branches that are not two or three. They're, for example, ten oh, wow. or seven uh-huh. or eight or whatever. Uh-huh. They just cut one every year. Oh. Or there are some people that just cut up all of the leaves. Okay. And they leave the main branch in and it grows back again. Uh-huh. That is super important. Yeah. And the tree can last at least um, maybe seven to eight cuts. Okay. So we're talking about cycles of, I don't know, six years. Wow. And then you have to replant the whole thing. Do you eventually have to? Yes. Okay. Yes, we do. Um, it's it's actually easier than, than you think. It's okay. not like we grab it from the floor. Yeah. That, yeah, we'll, we'll need like a bulldozer or something okay. to do that. Yeah, okay. It's caterpillar. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure it's not we that easy. You just cut it off still. and you put um, herbicide okay. on, on it. So it dies. Oh, okay. And it just, it's part of the... Got the it. earth. Okay. And then we plant a new one between two old oh. ones. So you kind of kill uh-huh. the old ones and you plant in the middle of oh, the new one. That's, that's awesome. So you renew uh, your plantation. And of that's course amazing. it's all about facts and yeah. numbers. Yeah. So productivity, uh-huh. copying potential, yeah. et cetera. Yeah. So that's a lot of important. a lot of strategy going into it. A lot of oh, yeah. work beforehand even planting yes. it. So what does, you already talked to us about kind of the coffee season. Oh, the types. We were talking oh, about yeah, the, the types. types. The types. Uh-huh. So I do know the taste of almost every single lot wow. we have. Wow. Uh, yeah, that's a lot of coffee. That a, is, trust me, it's my, a good tongue. my spoon is not that scratched just because. <laughs> like, I earn my salary. Definitely, <laughs> definitely. So um, not only flavor, uh-huh. but also the processes we make with it. Okay. So I've been in the industry for long enough uh-huh. to know how to process it towards uh, looking profiles through fermentation. Oh wow! Uh, slow drying. Um, it's a path that has been really long and has given us enough um, information to replicate and to offer, of course, a lot of benefits to the world. Definitely. So, for example, if someone wants a um, super high French roast, uh-huh. I always say, in terms of women, <laughs> yeah. horses, and coffee, uh-huh. no one's right. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, yeah. So, Definitely. If there's people that like it, yeah. I respect that. Yeah. And um, all of the roasters, we, we all know that for higher, darker uh-huh. profiles, you need density. Definitely. In coffee. Yeah. So, as a coffee grower, uh-huh. I know which portion of, of which farm oh. has more um, Dense. density uh-huh. through fermentation and slow drying. I can also improve that density. Wow. And on the dry meal, uh-huh. when we separate by screens uh-huh. the bean sides, uh-huh. I can also take only the like the denser one. Got it. So oh, okay. You can get to a second crack without that burn, like rubber. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of, Flavor. Definitely. So those are some kind of That's things awesome. that uh, just a few people know. Yeah, definitely. So it's important to be able to develop product and yeah. origin, right? Definitely. To be able to bring it to the market directly. Yeah. yeah. If yeah. you want to translate all of that knowledge and all of those advantages to you guys. Exactly. And, so in, yeah. and we, we love supporting it. I think it's I think it's also amazing for us to um, you know, like you said, working doing direct trade in coffee is not very very common so you know for us even in like this is tech we're starting our second year it's amazing that we connect with you guys and can kind of you know even it also cuts out the middleman so i it helps your farm i believe more 
direct with us and then it helps us also because we know what we're getting you know it's we it, there's no um you know like everything that emilio showed us from the beginning it was the same exact bean in those bags you know where you know the band switch is yeah. is, is very common so um we appreciate you guys um and then last question mm -hmm. do you drink coffee every day and if so how what's your favorite way of making it yeah. Of course, I do. I would, I would like die yeah. if I don't. I get it. Um, besides being the special to coffee director, uh -huh. expert, blah, 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 I make coffee at the office. Okay. I charge the coffee. Oh, nice. Every single day. If I don't, they all get mad. Uh huh. Um, so, yeah, I really drink a lot of coffee. Do you Just like pour me? over? What's your favorite? Yes. I'm what do you think gets the best flavor? I, it's kind of hard. I know there's so many different ways to do it, but if you were to pick, let's say, two ways, what would be, you know, you had them all lined up, what, which one would you go for? Okay, I would go for Kalita. Okay. Definitely, but with all of my stuff. Yeah. Like the lunar scale, uh -huh. the um, mellow bread, yeah. the barista kettle. Uh -huh. You know, I'm a coffee geek. Yeah. I'm like a major... Coffee Yeah. And uh, the second one, espresso. Okay. Yeah. Espresso um, is good. Yeah. Definitely. And then you can just put them together in the same line. Yeah. Like black that's true. Eye. Ooh. Well, I don't know. If, I don't know if our fans know about that either. Black eye. Oh, it's crazy. That sounds good. Yeah. It sounds really good. Put them on and just put like a double espresso into the. Ooh. Crazy. Whoa. Uh, that is a bomb. Whoa. We that need to try that favorite. one. We that definitely need to try that one. Yeah, wow. that would be really And it's super curious because you get like the subtle uh, sweetness of uh -huh. the filtered coffee uh -huh. and then like the personality. Yeah. Like espresso, but separately, but together. It's crazy. That's awesome. It's, we'll have to try that one out. Oh, yeah. You have, it's not like an Americano or something else. It's Really good. Oh, that sounds and good. At, at the office, could you my sister and I, we can drink at least in the morning one liter. Well, and on the afternoon, maybe another one. Okay. And when the rest of the coffee uh, drinkers are uh -huh. at the office, we could pass by four liters in one day. Wow. just six, seven, eight people. Wow. Yeah. We need to. Yeah. We need to come join you in time. Like I yes. said, is there is there anything Please. else you want to share with people about your farm? About you know how how special. I mean, we already explained. We've gone into good detail about how like why you guys are different than most other farms out there. Um, but is there anything else you want to share with? Uh, drink a coffee, please. Drink the coffee. Drink good coffee. Life is too short. Yes. God, Agreed. And once we're in, there's no way out. Definitely. So if you want to. Start drinking the coffee. Yeah. I'm sorry to tell you that. That's true. I, I honestly, I would drink any coffee before I started roasting. And now that I roast, it's not like I'm a coffee snob, but it's just not oh, no, the experience. Not. Worry. You'll get there. <laughs> but the, you know, the experience isn't the same. It's just not, I don't know. It's, it's, it's hard. And you roast coffee too. So, and you've yeah. been in the industry. So it's probably even harder to, is there any other type of bean you like other than the Colombian? Would you say? Do you like um, other regions? There's, a bunch of coffee that I've tried before uh -huh. that just, of course, that you've been in the Yeah. Amazing. Oh, yeah. Uh, Indonesian specialty coffee is great. Ooh. It's so different. It's like the opposite personality than Colombians. Wow. I really love it. A lot of peppers. Ooh. Um, I don't like it. It's great. It's yeah. just so different. Huge body. Mm -hmm. Textures are great. Um, what else? What else? Um, Sumatra tried some Sumatra. Really good yeah. Ones. There's some good ones. And there is a, this Iceland, Sulawesi. It's the, one of the best I've ever tried. Wow. It's great. Wow. And um, what else? And in my cup, of course, the mocha. Uh -huh. but, yeah, um, the mocha is. It has almost a hundred hour fermentation process before getting dried. Wow. It's natural, shadow dried for 60 days. Wow. It's crazy. Um, it's, Super crazy. I'm super excited to try that. So yeah, I will. All right, I appreciate it. Thank you so much oh, for you're coming so out. Yay. We look forward to seeing you again in Colombia soon. Yeah, please. And um, you know, we're gonna go out. Hopefully, plant some, plant oh, some yeah. uh, trees, and then you know, just kind of see exactly how we want to get our, our hands dirty. So. And if you want to 
if you do that, you will have to then go back. Definitely. Because I won't take care of your things. <laughs> I need to get my tree. To yeah, my oh, I get it. We'll, we'll be back, I'm sure. Oh, yes. But I'm so glad. Yeah, thank you so much. We love working You're with you. You're so welcome. I, mean, I know my coffee team will love it. Yes, thank you. I appreciate it.